Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and this is the planting plan video for Jenny's plot. We also think of this as the winter plot and it's kind of designed to be a minimal work plot. Um, our plan really around this plot is to have about 12 days, roughly once a month but really concentrated in the spring and the autumn, of sort of family work on there and we all come together, we have a bit of a picnic and we work for you know three or four hours and we, we do a big job on that plot and then we leave it for another month and then we come back and we do another big job <clears throat> and then we keep on doing that through the year and as I say we so in total I think we have about 12 really you know significant work uh, times on the plot. And other than that, really, it's just one or two hours a week, uh, mostly harvesting, a little bit of watering, a tiny bit of weeding, and then that's pretty much it. And that's because, as I said, it's the winter plot. So basically, it's growing all of the brassicas that we're going to eat all over winter and into spring. Um, it's, got, it's all of the storage veg, so all the broad beans that we're going to freeze, all the beetroot that we're going to store, um, and uh, all, this, all the winter squash, all the apples that we're going to dehydrate uh, and, and eat in, in winter and spring and early summer. Uh, basically, that's the philosophy of the plot, basically. It's, it's the kind of you know, late autumn, winter, early spring larder. Uh, and through that design, because it's bulk harvests of most of the time, bulk plantings and bulk harvests, it's very quick and efficient. And the reason we do that is because Jenny's disabled, so she can only really kind of come along and participate in those infrequent days. Um, and, uh, you know, when everybody else is around to support her, rather than sort of come in and, uh, 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 you know, every other day, like effectively, that's my plot. I mean, there's so hundreds of successions um, on my plot and, uh, you know, it's very complicated by comparison and it needs lots of daily attention um, or every other day attention, really. Whereas Jenny's plot, as I said, is designed um, in that way. But it's hugely productive and it's a really nice model for somebody who can really only come along to, a, to their plot you know, maybe every weekend for a few hours or every other weekend or something like that. Uh, this kind of design of a plot works really well and it, and it really does deliver in terms of uh, productivity. So let's take a look around the plot and, uh, and, and the different beds and what we've got planned for them. So the first job really of this season now will be to clear these field beans and we'll do that sometime in April and we'll be then re-mulching this whole bed with mushroom compost. Um, this is going to be the new brassica bed and we'll plant it in the beginning of May, somewhere around the 5th of May normally um, and basically this is the planting plan. So we'll have a double row of uh, collets down there, a double row of sprouts down there, a single row of cabbages down the centre and then we'll probably pop a few cabbages in gaps in between the sprouts uh, and the collets as well. In the first sort of six inches on the sides of the beds, on one side we'll plant carrots so a double row of carrots all the way down there and then on the other side we'll plant a double row um, of leeks all the way down there and basically that space is kind of unused really um, so uh, hopefully we'll, we'll squeeze a crop out of that, uh, that edge of those beds. Um, now we are doing a few things that we've never done before on here so one of the things is that we have a lot of problems with cutworms and the reason for that is that these beds are never never cultivated, they're never dug um, and so cutworms are never exposed and the birds can't come in and get them um, and so we're going to pre-water uh, the pots before we plant them with a nematode that kills cutworms and it also kills um, cabbage root fly and then two weeks later we'll water the plants again in the ground with that same nematode and then hopefully that's enough we won't uh, do anything else. As soon as we've planted we'll cover the whole bed with a net um, 
and the net stands about this high and that basically protects the cabbage, not the cabbage, the brassicas until about um, mid to late July. Then we'll take that net off and from that point onwards we'll control caterpillars with um, Bt. I really like taking the nets off at that time because I find there's always some pest by then that's inside the nets. There's always cabbage aphid or white fly or you know some uh, cabbage white uh, butterfly has got in there and if you've got the net on you can't see those pests and you can't manage them so it's kind of quite nice to get access to the beds uh, at that time. That also allows us to harvest the carrots of course um, which is quite nice. So that is it, basically it then. This bed will stay all the way through winter. Um, we'll start by harvesting the cabbages uh, and sprout leaves and um, collect leaves. And then at about, um, well, just before, uh, in sometime in December, we'll start harvesting sprouts and collets. And then those will go all the way through and obviously we'll still be harvesting cabbages all the way through. And the bed looks a bit like that one. So that is pretty much it for this bed. So next up is this little bed behind me and we're going to have runner beans here and then all of this bed that's currently brassicas, this will all be potatoes and there'll be a mix of Picasso, King Edward and Sarpamira. The Sarpamiras will go where those purple spread and broccoli are because they'll be the last thing to be harvested and Sarpamira are the longest lasting of the potatoes. So. Uh, Obviously that makes sense. Once those potatoes are harvested in September, early October sort of time, all this bed, including with this, where this bean frame is, this will all be um, uh, Aquadulce broad beans. So next up is this bed. So garlic and broad beans, and these are both timed basically for um, to be harvested at the same time. So sometime in late June, all this garlic will be harvested and we'll basically do a last harvest off those broad beans so, and that will be harvested for the freezer. So we'll have been harvested broad beans for a bit longer than, for a bit, from a bit earlier than that. But um, it, it's one of the few crops that we actually harvest for the freezer is the broad beans and that's because they just freeze so amazingly well and basically you can't really tell the difference between frozen and fresh. So uh, that's really nice. I don't actually like uh, mature broad beans. I only like them when they're little, um, but so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, once this bed is cleared, again, we'll remulch it with mushroom compost. And then all the way down that backside there, that is all going to be uh, purple sprouting broccoli. Down the center, where that path is at the moment, that will be fairly well trodden by then. That's where we're going to plant um, the winter spring cabbages. Or, uh, so there'll be some Savoys and Duncan and Durham early and things like that down here. And then all of this area where the garlic is at the moment, all the way down to the right there, that will all be beetroot. And then, yeah, I think that's probably it. Although what we might do is we might just pop uh, a row of carrots in down this edge here as well. Uh, we find that can be quite productive to use the edges in that way. And that then is pretty much it until October time when all of those beetroot get harvested and then this bed just gets replanted back as garlic. Um, and then that's pretty much it because all of the purple sprouting broccoli and the spring cabbages obviously stay in until spring. So then we've got the brassica bed from about here to the end there and that bed, this bed is all going to be uh, winter squash. So there'll be a mix there of crown prints um, and butternut squash and whatever it is, urshi curry and tender, tender cut uh, trumpuccino and Basically, well, that's it. Basically, it's just going to be squash. Uh, we'll mulch the ground again. We plant the squash at the beginning of June. Um, but before we do that, 
in this six inches around the edge which is accessible now and we'll so we'll plant um, in about April time probably that's when we'll put onions in here uh, all the way around the edge in the hope that the squash won't overrun them uh, by the time we come to harvest those onions and if the squash do overrun then um, it's no big deal because we'll just harvest the onions small and everybody loves small green onions anyway so it's no big deal but it just means that we get to use this this little bit of the bed which is actually pretty big when you look at the whole size of it um, whilst the squash are growing um, and it means it's it's not it's not wasted space um, so that is pretty much it for that bed and then we've got these two little beds so strawberries uh, obviously a perennial down the center there we've got shallots um, and I probably plant something on the centers of these shallots so here 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 uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'll put in probably maybe spring onions or something like that um, these shallots will obviously be harvested and then we'll replant probably again with shallots uh, in October time October November time and uh, that's pretty much it for this bed and we've basically got the same story over here strawberries down the outside and then down the center there probably shallots again later on in the season so everything else on Jenny's plot is perennial we've got currants and raspberries behind me and hopefully you can see really well mulched with uh, wood chips on these beds again keep the uh, weeding down and then we've got a really nice collection of trees we've got a uh, eating apple tree there a plum tree there um, concord pear tree there another eating apple tree there and another eating uh, apple tree there and that is pretty much it apart from the rhubarb that's it that's the uh, planting plan for Jenny's plot. So as you've seen from these different planting plan videos that I'm doing, the plots are extremely different, you know, in, in characteristics, workload, types of things that we grow, you know, the back garden's focused on summer, um, you know, Jenny's plot's focused on winter, my pot's, um, well, it's, my pot's just a little bit of everything, Debbie's pot is, is perennial, um, and, uh, you know, so the very different characteristics and would suit very different sorts of gardeners. Um, obviously they kind of suit us as well as a family uh, because uh, you know they're, they're all focused on different aspects of the seasons so anyway hope you like this quick video and i'll see you soon